Thank you for joining the webinar today. So my name's Rob and I'm going to take you through at Vero today. So I'm going to go through a full demonstration end to end. Um, and uh, hopefully by the end of that, you'll understand exactly how at Vero can help your business with document management, email management, and uh, and also just taking some of the uh, difficult parts around uh, that management of documentation um, to, a, to a better place for you. Um, so, um, what I'm going to do is run through an overview of um, Outvero for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually start by giving you a little bit of an overview of Outvero um, and, and what our customers find um, really interesting around Outvero and why it works so well. So Vero is a application that we build um, and then that sits on top of Microsoft. So what it really means is that we have um, all the power and all the um, security that Microsoft create and bring, and then we then overlay our platform on top of it. So we then use SharePoint for document management, but with all of the functionality that, um, that we know that our architects, engineers, construction, and owner-managed businesses actually really value. So things such as being able to have versioning control, being able to issue documentation, um, having email management, it's really important in projects. Um, and, um, and that is what we've then been able to build for Microsoft. So staying on the Microsoft thing, one of the great things about the way that that barrel there works is all of your project information stays inside your own tenancy. So we never own any of that information. We never take any of that information out. We That remains inside of your own Microsoft SharePoint tenancy. Um, and therefore, you have full access to that. You have access. Now you'll always have access in the future, regardless of whether you own AppBear or a customer at that time or not. It also means that you use the Microsoft security protocol. So things like single sign-on that Microsoft um, give for the businesses, that um, they work alongside. You'll use your own single sign-on to access Outvero. Um, it also means that because it's an application that we've built for Microsoft and using the Microsoft framework, that it feels like a Microsoft application. So a lot of our customers will say, this is a really familiar um, process and um, it feels like I've just got another Microsoft app, which means that typically we can find that users, once they have, um, once the setup and the initial implementations happened, that the users then come on board very quickly. And from having training one day, they will then be using Avero the next day. So some of the fantastic other bits around Avero and the way that it's built onto Microsoft are the integrations into the Microsoft ecosystem. So things like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel are directly accessed through Avero things like Outlook and the email integration. But then also we can take any of the information out of this and then really start to get into the detail by using things like Power BI um, and, and all of those Microsoft applications that then um, start to really bring together all of those different project related information systems into one place. And that's really what Avero is designed to do. So. Um, Thank you for, for listening to that bit. I thought it was really good for just giving a bit of an overview on what I feel is important and our customers' feedback is really important about um, how we've been built on top of Microsoft. So I'm going to go through and give you a little bit of an overview of, of Outvero. So you, you'll see now it's on the screen. Um, we um, What we do is we, we actually install the application onto your Microsoft tenancy. And what that does is then creates a, a hub site. So this is the Outvero hub site. Um, within the hub site, you'll then have a list of all of the different projects that you've got inside of Outvero. So you can see a full list of all of those projects all individually set out. You'll see information about those projects, who's involved in that project, and what sectors, fee arrangements, etc. And also, we can also track those projects by stages. Um, and I'll show you a little bit around how that works um, later. Avero also keeps a full contact database. So you can see here that we have all of the contacts that we work with. And um, and these are any of the project, any of the contacts for any of the projects that we that that we are working on at the moment. So you see when I click on Alan, you'll see his information, which is great for getting in contact with him, but also we can see which projects Alan's working on um, alongside um, the rest of our team. 
And we also have a company's database in here. So these are all of the companies that we work with, with all of these um, projects that we've got. So this is the, 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 the project hub site. Um, so we've got that there. We then also have the manager section. Now the manager section really is a, a bit more of an administration area. And for me, this, um, this is really the heart of making sure that we get consistency in our projects. So within the manager section, what we then do is we will set up each of the individual projects. And for the projects, what we'll do is we'll decide, okay, what naming scheme do we apply? So Arvero has ISO 19650 that's built into the platform and maintained by us. So that's a standard, British standard uh, naming scheme that's also been adopted um, globally. So we have that and maintain that, and a lot of our customers will use that for projects. However, we also know that there's lots of other naming schemes that are used. Um, maybe it's an internal naming scheme. Maybe the client mandates a particular naming scheme. So that's OK. Alvero can handle multiple different naming schemes. Um, and, um, and what you'll then do is decide on when I'm creating the project, what is the naming scheme that we're going to apply to that? So Alvero works in a way of building a template so that when we create a project, it looks the same as the last project that we created and the last project before that as well. And the way that we do that is we have inside of this hub site where I am at the moment, we then create that template. That template will then say, okay, how do I want that project to look? So what items do I want on the navigation bar? What information do I want on the home screen? What naming scheme do I want to be applied to that? Is there a list of templated documents like Word documents, like an agenda, as an example, that I want to see against those um, against that project? So our customers initially will set up those uh, the hub site so that when I then press new project, what that will then do is it creates a new project with all of that information, all of that templated information across. So for consistency, it's absolutely fantastic. It means that every single new project has exactly the same information in there. And then if I want to customize that, I can do, or I can use different templates. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea on starting to get consistency across projects and also how um, the projects are created. They are created in the hub site that we, we have here. And then each of the project is a sub site to the hub site. So that you then, when, when you press create project, you'll then be able to then go to each of them individually. And you also assign members against that. So that's people that can access each of the individual projects. So certain projects can be completely locked down if you want to do it that way. So when I go into um, my list of projects, what you'll see is a list of all of the projects. And very easily, I can just click on one of the links and take me to that project. So. Up at the top here, uh, the tab that I've got here, this is one of the projects that I've already created. And what you'll see here is, this is the um, view of how I set these projects up. So that using the templates that I just mentioned, I've got a list of all of the navigation bar menus that, uh, sorry, menu items that I want to see. So things like the relevant projects, just relevant contacts just for this project. Um, the records, which is the, the really the heart of Vero and where all the information sits. Things like approval process, the, the files that we've received from others, the files that we've sent out, issue registers. And then we've got things that we can create like project workflows or checklists. And then there's links to the inbox for that particular project and the project in Teams. And then also we can have any other link we want. So if I wanted to create a link to OneNote for that particular project, I can do that here. I can create project calendar and add that into here. So one thing just to mention before we move, we go into the record section is that at Vero will create using that template, it'll also create a Teams instance and it'll also create a group email inbox. Um, or mailbox. So all of those things start to be built by Outvero and come together within that group so that you can then start to have all these links within here and be able to have one central location for your projects. Looking in the record section, um, this is where we store all of the relevant records for this particular project. So what you'll see inside of here is we've got a number of different records. These can be a group of different um, um, documents. It could be just an individual document and there's lots of different types of information that we've got within here. So as you look down 
Um, all of these records that we're seeing here are all the very latest version of that. And we know that that's a problem typically is understanding, have I, have I got the latest version? Am I working on the latest version? And certainly when we're going to issuing information, like, is this the latest version of the information? How do I know that? Well, inside at Vero, we know that because um, at Vero only surfaces the very latest information for you. So I can see within this one, if I click on here, what it will then do is it'll open up this ground floor plan. So I can have a look at this ground floor plan and I can start to zoom in. I can look at the, the detail that's sitting inside of here. Um, but how do I know that it's the latest version? Well, Avero creates a versioning control against this. So what we can see within here is this is a list of all of the revisions that we've created of this document. So revision being the version of that. And it starts here from the very beginning. So we've got zero one that we've got down at the bottom. And I can go to this information here. So straight away, I can see that there are three different types of document that were created or also that were added to this record when this record was created. If I click on the information, what that then allows me to then do is go to here, which then gives me some more detail. So I can see some information around what that um, document's titled, when it was uploaded. So it was uploaded on the 20th of July. It was uploaded by myself. Um, some more information about the size and scale. And then we can also see whether that was transmitted. So was it issued? Was it sent out to anyone? So in the, in the case of this particular record, no, it wasn't. Did it go through an approval process? Yes, it did. And when was that approval process? So all of this then will tie back into these. So I know now this wasn't transmitted. So when I go into the issue tab, it will say there's no issues. This document wasn't issued. I can see the renditions of the three different types of document that were then attached. I can also see the review process. So the reviewer, the date, and any notes that were that were added at that point, and any markup files, which would then also appear there. So with this being very early information, really this was just a creation of the record. It didn't need to be sent out, it didn't need to be issued, um, but it did go through an approval process because we want that in there. If I was to look at one of the more later pieces of information and go to um, the latest one, what you'll see is that actually this was issued. This was sent in an issue on the uh, issue 31. And you can see that that happened as transmitted within there. You can also see the approval status um, and the review um, marks and, and notes and any markup files that may or may not have been attached. And I'll show you through how that approval process works um, in a few minutes. So what you'll see here is that actually at Vero allows you to then be able to get that get the information that's the very latest and very, very uh, easily gather that information together. So no more searching within folders or trying to find that um, through emails or wherever that else is stored. Um, at Vero allows you to then see the very latest version of every single record and then the full history of exactly what's happened behind that. Now, one of the things that we get asked quite a lot at this point is, um, well, we use folder systems at the moment and we've got a folder structure. Everyone's familiar with the folder structure and we know that we've got those five container level folders at the top and then we then go down further and further. How do we do that inside our Vero? So um, the way that our Vero works with that is actually more sophisticated within folders because we can do, because we can use the metadata so with, a, with folders, what we find typically is that it's very easy to just drag and drop information into folders, but actually it's the finding the information later or knowing that it's the very latest information, which can be a real challenge. So what um, we do inside our Vero is we, first of all, we have the ability to set up different views against um, the records that we've got inside of here. So I set up my favorite views. So each customer will have completely different views that they will use as their favorite ones. So currently I've got my favorite view just set as uh, by company. What I can do though, is if I wanted to just quickly go to Word documents, that would then take me just to the Word documents. If I want to go to um, a initial status view with, with uh, the status being S1 or A1, then I can do that. And I can choose any different view that I wish to. The, the way that we do that is by going through and creating these filters. So let's say that the view that I've got at the moment um, is more or less um, perfect for me, but actually I just want to find a little bit more information. So I've got it grouped by company. I'm happy with that. Maybe I just want to see just the DWFs that are then included in there. So what I can then do is go through 
And I've now just see that information. So I've got just the DWFs that are then included against the records. If I like that view, then what I can then do is just go through and save that view. And um, so I'll title that demo view. And now I then have the ability to just go to that view. So in future, if I'm on my company view, which is my standard view that I prefer, and then I decide, oh, actually, I just want to see just the DWFs, then all I need to then do is just go to demo view and that will then just take me to that view again. So it's really easy to be able to do that. And again, the reason that we can do that is that it's defined by metadata. So the metadata is again, um, totally up to you and your company, what you want to see within there. So you can define those metadata um, categories and then apply those against here. So it might be that actually you wanted to search just by the role of architect. It might be that you want to go by zone. We can do all of that. So I'm just going to go back and go back to a company view. So as I go back to that again, this is my preferred view, and this is the one that I just see on a, on a daily basis. So this is where I work from. So you're possibly wondering, okay, this is showing information that's already sitting inside of Atbero. How do we actually get anything else into Atbero? How do we start with, with information inside Atbero? So there's a few ways that we can do that. The first one is that we have a, um, uh, a connection into both Revit and AutoCAD so that within those particular programs, so you can then go through and export that information. So if I was in AutoCAD and I was working on a, a drawing inside of there and I then wanted to send that into Avero, whether that's for approval or whether that's just for having that point in time and a reference point or whether that's, that's something that I want to issue or a combination of all three of those, I can then send that across directly from AutoCAD. So no more having to export that from AutoCAD and then go and save that into a, into a, a folder system on your server. What you can then do is just directly send that from AutoCAD into Avero. That will then sit inside here and then go through the normal process of approval and an issue if you wish to do that. We can also um, add information in through an upload. So what I'll be able to then show you next is that um, we go through um, files from us or files from others. So this is dependent on whether we what we've created the, the files ourselves or whether we have them um, that we've been sent them. So if I go into create uh, upload files from us, what I'll then do is I'm just going to go through and drag some um, information to here. So within this folder that I've got here, I have some some for, some information that I want to uh, bring into Atbero and add into records. So what you'll see when I let go of this is that Atbero will change, uh, will look at the line items and then change color dependent on what it sees within there. So you'll see that they all started off um, as gray and that actually they changed color as they went across. So the reason that these have gone red is that Atbero is set up with a naming scheme, which is what I mentioned at the, at the beginning, the, for this particular example, we're using 19650 for the naming scheme. And um, what it's then recognized is that we have um, a, the, an incorrect um, component of the naming scheme here. So that the number should be five characters long. So it's recognized that there's an additional four on the end there. So it could just be a mistype. Um, so what we then do is go back to the source document a, and where this, where this originated from, change the name there so that when we then re-import it next time or any future times that it's then been fixed. So I know there's an issue there. Atbero has picked that up to say that the, the naming scheme is incorrect. And that's one of the fundamental parts of Atbero is having that consistency of naming scheme means that the information that comes into here is very easy to find, but also can be shared um, with clients or uploaded to CDEs. Um, and you'll know that, that naming consistency is there because Atbero will check it. For this piece down here, um, what's actually happened is I brought this into the wrong project. I've just added it into the wrong project. It was just a simple mistake that happens quite regularly. Um, and that bearer is telling me that this has been added into the wrong project. Whereas in a folder, I wouldn't necessarily know that. I'd have just dragged and dropped it into there and um, potentially I'm causing a problem because the wrong project's information is sitting inside there. I'm certainly not helping myself by doing that. 
So once we've removed those, what we then see is that we've got the information sitting inside of here. And I've always gone through and done a check across the the, uh, the name and that does conform to um, 19650 and the way that we set that up. It also is saying, I've, we've seen this before. So last time that you created this document, you called it ground floor plan. And he also called this one second floor plan. And the last time that we saw that, it was revision number six and revision number six. So do you want it to be revision number seven? Um, and um, and if I'm happy with that, I can do. Alternatively, I can just overtype that and I could just put a different number in completely. Um, and and I can use any naming scheme or revision number naming scheme that I wish to. I also need to just add in the status before we can send that across. So what I'll do is we could have, we could potentially have 20 or 30 different records within here. Maybe I just want to name them all at the same time. So I can do that and I can go through and just choose a status code against that and then apply that metadata. And then all these columns are updated. At this point, we can also decide on what other metadata do we want to apply to this, this information as it comes into our Vero. And you can see the different types of information that we can add into here. And again, this is specific to your company and what you want to see. We can also mandate some of these fields so that we can make sure that they are um, mandatory for somebody to fit, add that information in. If I'm happy with this and happy with the information that we've got within there, I can then just upload that information. And what that will then do is it'll update the record and it will add those six different documents into the two different records that we then have inside of our Vero. The same happens if we receive files from others. So let's say somebody sent us something from WeTransfer. Um, what I want to do is try and add that in. So we have the ability to just go through. All we need to do is just choose the, um, the company. We need to then choose how did we actually receive that. We'll put a reference against this. And then once we've then done that, what you'll then see is we have this simple drag and drop. It works in exactly the same way. But the only difference being is that we don't necessarily need to have a naming scheme against this because if we've received information, we've not been the, the authors or the creator of that information, then it may not conform to a naming scheme. So we can apply one if we wish to, but typically we wouldn't do that. And we'll just add that into here. We'll just drag and drop the files in and then we can then save them as they are. Now, one of the ways that we do find that people will um, get information from a project, so this is receive and also send at the moment, um, is through email. Now, Avero creates a really sophisticated issue process that we always recommend our customers then follow from that point onwards um, to stop sending out information in that particular manner. But we know that information will always be received. And the other side of it is it's not always just the information. Sometimes it's the text within those emails that are just as important as the actual document. So what we have um, in here, and I'll just open up a, a remote desktop um, just so that we're, I'm working on a, a Windows machine because I, I know that most of our customers do use Windows. So what we've created inside of uh, Alvero is email filing system. So what this allows everyone to do as a customer is, is really simply and easily be able to file any project related emails that, that need to be into the right project, but they're also doing it really easily and really simply, really quickly. So you'll see here that inside my email um, inbox, you'll see that we've got information that we've got relating to a project. So if I was to then click onto this email and open it up, you can see that I've now got OL oh, Towers drawings as requested. So if I've been sent this by an external collaborator or anybody that I'm working on with that project, what I'd potentially be doing is downloading this information off the email, putting it into um, on my desktop, then going onto the server, then filing it into the right folder on that server, and then moving forward with it and then potentially working with it. But what we want to do is try and remove that process. So what we can do to make that really easy is we then have inside of our Vero the ability just to file that email. So we've got an add-in that we then um, install onto Outlook. And what that then allows us to then do is go through and just file that email. So this um, pop-up that's then happened shows me the projects that I personally am working on. So I can see the five different projects that I've got within here. And it also allows me to then select the project. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I want that information to send into 
Oh, or Towers project, and I want it to be stored there. So I'm going to look at this. Um, I'm then going to say, do I want to file the attachments as records? Yes, I do. Do I want to file the email conversation? Yes, I do. So at this point, what I can then do is go through and file the selected. And what you'll see happening very quickly over here is that Vero goes through and checks all of this information to make sure that it has um, has it seen that record before? Is it new records? Um, is it correct as well? So what we then see is that for each of these, um, Avero has recognized that there's actually three documents that are attached with the same title. So there's actually a DWF, a DWG, and a PDF that are attached in there. So it said that all three of those are a new record. There's a DWF and a DWG that's attached here, and they're both new records. And then there's some PDFs at the bottom there. So it's attached them all individually and what it's going to do is create new records for those um, attachments that are inside of there and they're then going to show inside of Vero. so it's really simple for me to be able to do that if i wanted to just uh, not include some of those i can also uh, do that with by just removing that check and if i wanted to um, ed edit any of the information i can also do that within there so i can then um, tidy this up before I send it into Vero, or I can also tidy up afterwards and after it's been sent into Vero, it's entirely up to up to the customer. So once I've then decided on what I want to do, I'm just going to go through and file that. And that now is uh, is going to be filed into the project and also it's going to be filed as an email into the group um, email inbox. So with me having uh, what, eight or nine attachments on, on that particular um, email it'll just take about 30 40 seconds which it'll do in the background it does this on microsoft 365 um so it doesn't slow down your machine whatsoever um and you can carry on working or continue to file other information if you uh, if you're going to do that in bulk so the other side of that is that when we're sending emails out actually that is some of the most important emails that we can uh, that we'll we'll will have because potentially it's something that we've said that maybe could be um could be something that's then brought up again in the future something that's uh, an agreement to something so we want to capture both sides not just the email inbox we want to capture the the outgoing emails as well so what you'll see here is when i go through and, uh, and i'll just send uh, to our demo email address um, and a quick test email what you see is as soon as I press send, that pop-up um, appears and I can do the same thing again. I can go through and file and send that into the project so that we then have that email correspondence on an outgoing. And if it's not project related, then I can just send without filing. So this means that every single email that goes out theoretically should be filed by the individual unless they choose to say send without filing. Mm -hmm. So if I go into uh, the group that you see down here, um, this is the, all of the email information that we then have for all of the different projects. So I can see uh, from within here, I can see all of the emails that have ever been related, uh, filed related to this project. So in a year's time, and I wanna look at this information, it's still gonna sit there. In three years time, it's gonna be there. In 15 years time, it's going to be there. It's not reliant now on the person who's uh, who being in the, in the company, because we hear that sometimes people leave the business and as a result, they then get to the place where um, if you're trying to find out information that they've emailed, you, it's very, very difficult. So from an Avero perspective, everything sits in here. It's really easy to then be able to see that. What we also um, have inside of inside of here is we um, we also have a visual representation of whether things have been filed or not. So you can see now that this the one that we've just filed um, thirty seconds ago has now been filed. I know that because there's a green icon that sits against this, and it also says filed in Outvero. So you can see that all of these have been filed into Outvero, and the information sits there and all of the attachments and the records because I chose to say uh, for the text of the email and also the attachments to be filed. It, doing it this way means that from our um, colleagues that may have been CC'd on this, that they also will see this filed in Vero. So you don't end up with duplication of um, attachments and you don't end up with du duplication of emails either. So we'd completely deduplicate de that. And then if I want to go and search for anything within that, um, project all I need to do is just go into here and just type in fire as an example and that will then go through and it'll find any information from that whole project that has the word fire inside that um, 
uh, email or inside the content of the email itself. So um, that gives you a little bit more of an overview of, of how um, we receive information, how we add that into our Vero. So whether that's with the integrations that we've got into Revit and AutoCAD, whether that is um, uploading information with files from us or files from others, um, we um, or whether that's receiving email information, we have all of that um, covered by Atvero and it makes it really simple and really easy for you to be able to do that. So the next part that I'm just gonna go through is um, once we've got that information here, well, what are we gonna do with it? So I know that previously um, I added that information into here. So I created some, I uh, created a revision update of the records that were already inside here using that file files from us. So as I go through and look at these records, as I go down, I'm looking for um, a, a different color within here. And what this different color represents is the two documents that I added in. Because I have a review process against these, that automatically um, these two documents as they're added in will have then gone into that, that almost queue for the approval process. The person who's the approver for that will have received an email to say there is a, some documents that need to be approved and um, they will then be able to go and look at those. They'll see that here when they log in, that there's two records for them to approve. They'll see the different color change that within these records. And um, and until that happens, these records cannot be issued from Atvero. So the next step for me is to go into the approval process and I can see the two records. I can see the three different documents. If I want to have a quick look at that, then that's fine. I can go in and preview that document from here so you can see that that's there. I can zoom in, um, have a look at the, the detail in that. Um, I can download that if I wish to. I can assign additional reviewers um, and I can go through and approve or reject. So typically, if it's going to be approved, or rejected, um, you'll want to put the approval comments in. If from a rejection, you may additionally want to add in some markup comments or markup files. So you can do that um, by adding any uh, markup file that you wish to into at Vero. And all that that does is it just picks up from your desktop um, within there. So I can go through and add in the comments into there. So if I'm happy with all of these, which I, I am today, I'm going to go through and approve those, um, all OK. Please issue. And what then will happen is, if you remember originally on the record section, what then will happen is they are then approved. The record section will now not have those uh, the yellow color against them to show that they need to go through approval. The approval part there is also removed, and those records themselves can actually be um, can now be issued. So we then have those sitting inside here. So I think this, these were the ones that we were using before. You'll see here now that within issue seven, you'll see now it was uploaded by myself. That it's not been transmitted. It's not been issued because we've not got to that stage yet. And then we've also gone through a review process where we've got that inside there. So then one of the things that our customers really like about this is that the, all of the history around that document stays inside one simple location and it's really easy to find. So it's not just easy to find now whilst I'm maybe working alongside the client to try and prepare that information for them. It's also really easy to find in five years time where I've forgotten about this particular piece of information. I've certainly forgotten about who went through the approval process and any of the, the revisions. But what I can do in five years time is I can just go straight back to here and see exactly what has happened and our customers love having that um that structure to um having all the documentation we also have um then the next part will be going through and issuing information so we've shown you how to create that information how to bring that into um at vero um, what I'm then going to do is I'm just going to go through, change the filter. I'm going to run through to today. And what you'll see there in for today is that we also have some additional documentation. So what I can then do is go through and um, I'm going to create a new issue for this. So we have one process of creating an issue inside of Atvero. Um, and the reason for that is just to really create a consistency on information being sent outside of the business. So it means that if you follow this one process, that any information not only is um, sent in a in a one simple way, but also a really professional manner, which you'll see soon, 
it also means that we can then trace that information and be able to see what actually happened with that. And again, that same thing of is relevant right now today so I can see if the client received it, but it's also really relevant in five years' time when I've got to go and identify what actually happened with this information. So we create the issue in, in this way. So I'm going to go through and put um, demo issue. Uh, what was the date today? I think it's the 30th. Um, we're then going to go through and choose the status code for that particular issue. And these, again, are defined by self. Any notes that are going to be included on the transmittal sheet. So this is just a description of, of what you're sending inside there and why you're sending it. And then also we can have the template. So you define a template. How do you want this to look when it's sent out? You can have multiple ones, whether that's just an internal one, whether that's one that's going to be a bit fancier that goes to the client. Um, so you can choose through there. You can also set up distribution lists. So if on a Friday you send everything out to the client leadership team as a pack of report, then you can set that up and that will then send out, you click on that link uh, list there. And what that will then do is it will bring all the people that that's going to be sent to. Again, it might just be an internal um, recipient list. So you then click on there. It makes it nice and easy. Or alternatively, you can just go through and just add one person at a time and send that out. So although I said at the beginning that we actually only create one process around an issue, actually, there's lots of different methods that you might need to actually send that issue out. So what we have inside our Vero is in multi uh, multiple different options for actually sending those out, so different methods. So number one that we've got down here at the bottom is we have an integration to BIM 360 where you can send that directly into the project within BIM 360. So if a client's asking for that to be sent there or you want that information to be stored there, you can then use that option. You can also export as a zip file for a download. So that's if a client's using their own CD or something else that they want you to provide that information through. Maybe we transfer or something like that. You can export that. You can also email as um, some links to SharePoint, or you can copy the link to SharePoint. But actually what the vast majority of our customers and probably 99% of our customers use is this email with AppVero checkpoint link. So our checkpoint is AppVero's um, portal. So it's a portal that we provide for you to then be able to use for sharing the information, which then gives so much more knowledge around what's actually happened for that issue. So I'm gonna use that today. I'm gonna to talk you through how that works. We then also have things like the access, uh, expiry date. I know that you, when using WeTransfer, there's a frustration on if the client doesn't download it within two weeks' time, then it expires, and then you have to go through that whole process of doing it exactly the same thing over and over again. So you can put an expiry date, or you can just completely remove that as well if you wish to. So that's entirely up to you, and you do that on an issue by issue. And then we've got some things around the email comments, a little chat um, bits that you might want to put into the comments, um, just say, hey, and how are you doing? Um, and then also I mentioned earlier about maybe on a Friday, you send all of this, the document pack over to the client um, as an update. Well, you can do that within here. So you can choose that weekly distribution list. And what that will then do is it will bring up if you've got 10, 12, 50 different documents and, and drawings that you want to send out to them weekly as the very latest revision, you just click that. And what that will then do is it will then give you that particular list. And again, you can have as many of those as you wish to so that you can then choose those individual lists. So it makes sending out the same information on a weekly basis or a monthly basis very, very easy to do because you just click on that once. I'm not going to do that today because I just wanted you to use the, the documents that we sent, uh, that we imported before. You'll see down at the bottom, Avero has got the two different documents and it's also defaulted to PDF, which is just good practice to send out PDFs. But alternatively, we could, if we wanted to, add the working files. So we could add the, the DWF, DWG, if we wish to, um, into there so we could send those out alongside. But typically, we wouldn't suggest that we do that. And then what we'll do is go through and create and transmit. So by creating and transmitting, what we then do is Avero then creates that transmittal document and sends that out to the individual. So before I go and show you the other side of it, which is um, what does that look like? So what does it look like when the person's received the information um, that we sent them an email? What does that look like? I'm actually going to show you a little part of Avero, which is really useful for our customers. And I and I touched into it a little bit earlier. I'm just going to go back to my company view. So when I was back on the hub site, what I mentioned there was that we have um, a ability to, to work with Word documents, Excel documents. So our customers 
will create the templates that they use regularly um, inside of Outvero. So they'll add them into Outvero. And what we can then do is create that Word document directly from Outvero. Outvero will build up the naming scheme from here. So you can see that we've got that. Um, it will then go, as, and as I click on this weekly agenda, if you could just look at the top down here, um, what, sorry, the top up there, um, what will then happen is I click on that, and now it's just updated. So it's given um, AG for agenda. It's also said it was an architect do document uh, because that's how we set it. And it's also given the next one in the series of those documents, so number 10. So we don't have to worry about renaming documents and getting the sequence correct. We then have quick parts in here, which um, will be set up by you, depending on what you want to see in um, inside this um, document. And then I'll show you that in a moment. And then we're just going to add that last part, which is the address on. And what this then does is it opens up Word on your machine. So it'll open up Word. Um, and that then means that I've got all of the functionality that Word has natively to be able to work on this. It brings in the template that I've got here. It gives me quick parts and it gives the document reference against it. So I've got the name within there. And I'm able to then go through and add information into there. If I can spell that correctly. I can also collaborate with anyone else at this point because it is just Word Online, so I just need to just share that with them, and then and we can work at the same time. What that allows me to then do is, as it's saving, what it, I can then do is I can close that down, and if I go back to the, um, the filter view uh, of today, what you'll then see is that we now have that agenda within there. If I click on that, that's now version 0.3. So I can continue to edit that, that current version and work on it. I can share it for review, or I can publish that version, which is what I'm gonna do at the moment. And I'm just gonna choose the revision number, title, um, and then also the uh, the status against that. You'll notice that Outbearer will then create that PDF of the Word document, so that then I have that snapshot in time. I have the Word document, which I can continue to work on if I wish to, but I also have a PDF document of revision one, and they will then be linked together as a record inside here. And if I update that, then it will go to revision two, three, four, however I want to name that, and you'll see that progressing. So you can do that in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, and that means that then that everyone in the, in the company is using the, the right templates and the most up-to-date templates, but also using all of the power of Word, Excel, uh, and PowerPoint um, to actually create those. And there's a, such a consistency in, in doing that. So I'm gonna go back into my emails again. So what you'll see if I go back into my emails and then into the inbox is, if we can think about this now being the recipient's email inbox. So um, the recipient has received an email. It's come from me individually. So it would come from yourself if you would send it and you'd say your name against that and not a generic email in, um, outbox. If they were to reply to that, it would go directly to me. So it makes it nice and easy for conversation, which we can then file again into Outvero and show within the group. But for this, where we've got the transmittal, we then have an attachment that's the transmittal document that gives the detail of what's actually contained within the transmittal. And again, that, the template that you use. And then we have the template around the email. So this template shows me that there's two different records that are attached um, to this transmittal. I can't access them from here, but all I have to do is go view transmittal. This takes us to the portal where you'll have your own logo and your own um, images at the back. And then you can then go and request the code. So what this code does is it's a six-digit multi-factor authentication code, mm -hmm. similar to the way that you'll log on to uh, your, your bank or any other um, places that you'll be quite familiar with. So once I've then got that, I can then go back into that Vero checkpoint and the portal. I can paste that in there. And now all I need to then do is I can click on the link and it will then take it to the downloads on my PC that I'm working on at the moment. And I can then have that. So I've got that. Or if there's a hundred different items, which is not a problem with Checkpoint where it would be with um, email, I can just download that. So one of the things that our customers typically find that they get rid of first is we transfer is one of the, the quickest things to uh, to remove. Um, they don't need a paid version for it because we can start to send that information out this way. What it also does is I know now that the recipient has received that information. But from my side, what does that actually mean? Well, I want to go into the transmittals area. And if I look at that transmittal that I sent out, what I can see within here 
is I can go through checkpoint because we sent it to checkpoint. I know that that was successfully issued as a, um, as the transmittal. And I can see that John Smith downloaded all those files. So what else do I know? Well, actually, I can see um, by date and time that John clicked the link, entered the multi-factor authentication code, viewed the transmitted files, downloaded one single one, and then downloaded all of the files in exactly the time that we did that. So here, currently in the UK, it's, uh, it's 3.45, and we did that just a minute ago. So. Now, what that then means is because we've been issuing in the same way, we've not only have we got a consistent format for the issue, but also we can start to pull together the information that's contained in the issues. So I know, know that on the most, and this just defaults to the, the 14 most recent issues, I can see the documents that were then sent out in any of the issues, the title, I can also see the revision number, and I can see which document was sent on which different issue i can also see down at the bottom here i can see who that was sent to and if i want to go back to the document i can click on the link or if i want to go to the issue i can click on the link and i can see what that what's happened with that so it really starts to gather the information together that's hard to try and pull together is who's received what how do we know what's been sent out and how do we then prove that and again the same thing that i mentioned earlier how do we prove that today and how do we prove that in five or ten years time so Avero gathers all that information together for you. So I appreciate I've gone through quite a lot today. Um, the the really I wanted to give you a really good comprehensive overview of how Avero works. Um, summary really from this point is that Avero is about getting that naming scheme, getting the information together, being really consistent in the way that you gather that, taking that information from multiple different sources and putting it into one simple and easy to use uh, location. Being able to have version control that then um, is really easy to access the history of that. And then also then being able to then start to gather the other project related information together. So, um, there's then some additional things that happen by using that Vero, which I just want to quickly touch into. And this last bit will take about five minutes. So what we then have is we also have some project workflows um, or um, as with at Vero, you can call them uh, whatever you need to. So in this particular um, project, I've just moved to a different project called checklists in here. And what this checklist allows us to then do is have all of the information, all of the tasks that we need to follow around a project all in one location. So what you'll see here is that we actually have this checklist aligned to the REBA stages. And what all of these individual tasks are, are related to the individual stage. So as we go down here, we've got the fee schedule prepared. Um, have we notified the client in writing about our BIM policy? Um, and inside all of these, what you'll see is that we have um, things like the status. So this is in progress at the moment. Who's the actioner who created that? Who's the who's the reviewer of that? When's the start and, and due date of that? Any description around that? Any notes relating to the task itself? And then the evidence that then sits relating to this task, which then relates to the stage. So this is very much evidence-based checklists that allow you to then run the project and make sure that everyone has completed the right tasks all the way through the project. And that then, if you remember right at the beginning, relates back to these stages. I can see straight from here from my list of projects, I can see what stage everything's up to. So these are all, um, we have these in here. This is just an example of Reba. You can create whatever checklist that you want to see within here um, and then use those different stages that you've got within there. And that's really helpful for our customers. We also, um, for those out there that use Teams for projects um, or wanting to use that uh, Teams for projects, we also have um, the Avero part within within projects. So if I go into Teams and I just open that up within here, you'll see that we've got the projects. So the one that we've been working on sitting inside here. And what we can see is that we've got some of the files and some of the information around the, the project and the conversation, but also we have then the Avero tab. 
And you'll recognize this. And if I go again back to my favorite, the company tab, you'll see that this is exactly the same information that we saw earlier. So what this means is that I can work from here if I want to. If I'm more happy in Teams, I can work in Teams. I can create the records. I can then um, go through approval processes. I can issue information. I can see the email inbox. I can do everything that I want, really, other than some of the deeper administration parts. Um, but on a day-to-day -day working place, I can go and, and work directly from here. So there are loads of other little bits and pieces that we can integrate into Atvero um, that then help you with running projects. As I said, like OneNote um, that you might have within their project calendars. Um, and um, and all of those are, are, are parts that you may or may not want to add into the project. Some of our customers start with very simple, let's work with email management, let's work with um, simple project related information, let's go through the approval process, let's go through issuing. And then that typically then starts to build out from there. So I really appreciate you um, uh, sitting watching this today. Um, really, really value that you've uh, spent the time doing that today. If you've got any questions whatsoever, um, one of the members of the Atvero team will be reaching out and um, and seeing if you've got anything that you need to answer um, and you'll be able to ask them any questions that you've got. So thanks very much and hope you have a good day. Thank you.